Today's scripture reading is from Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Please follow along. This is the message that the prophet Habakkuk received in a vision, Habakkuk's complaint. How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere, I cry, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. The law has become paralyzed, and there is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous, so that justice has become perverted. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. I will climb to my watchtower and stand at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer my complaint. The Lord's second reply. Then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. The vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it, sure, it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves, and their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by the faithfulness to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Murph. Breaking my heart. Habakkuk was a man who sought answers throughout his entire life. He was troubled by what he observed on a regular basis of people, so he would ask difficult questions of them. And these questions were not merely intellectual exercises or bitter complaints. He saw a dying world, and it broke his heart. He asked the question, why is there evil in the world? And why do the wicked seemingly keep winning, O oh God? He cries out, how long? How long, O oh Lord, must I call for help? And you do not listen. Violence, he says, is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. Now, most prophets spoke to the people what they heard from God. Habakkuk spoke to God about what he saw and what he witnessed caused him no small amount of consternation. It was a time where people were living out of control. Injustice was the order of the day, or you received as much justice as you were able to afford. But there was so much wrongdoing going on, so much oppression, so much violence and strife and conflict of all kinds. Folks, have you ever felt alone in standing for justice in the world where God seemed to be indifferent? I have. I have. Well, the prophet questions God directly, and God's answers are recorded in this book. Habakkuk boldly and confidently takes his complaints directly to Almighty God, and well, God answered with a, with a truckload of proof and prediction. Have you ever questioned God, from when you were young with innocent queries to having rather 
complex discussions with God as you grew older? <laughs> Asking God just how and why and when, oh God? Trying to probe, you know, beneath the surface to perhaps finding satisfying answers. Have you ever done that? I have. Not all questions have answers that are wrapped up, friends, in a bow with plenty of empirical data. No, not at all. Some unanswered questions lead to more questions. More questions, which leads to spirit-destroying doubt. That's what happens. Now, today, some of us choose to simply live with our doubts. Some will ignore them, saying, I, I just want to, to move on with my life, Dan. I, uh, others become cynical in their hearts, and it's hardened. Their hearts become hardened. But many, many reject those options and continue to ask questions, looking for answers. Habakkuk asked, what else can I do? What else can I do, O oh God? What do I do, O oh God, with the contrast of people facing me? Those that profess a faith and my experience of those faithful. Of those faithful. Hey, they say the Apostles' Creed, but do they live it? Now, Habakkuk is not angry, as are some of us here this morning. Not angry, not angry in his complaint to God, but deeply, deeply pained and bewildered at what he sees. He's confused as a passionate believer. Habakkuk wonders, as he looks around, he, he, he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. There, there is a professed central devotion to God in the people's lives, but why aren't they seeing what I'm seeing? Why aren't you seeing what I'm seeing, people? <laughs> Where is the consistent public outcry and common complaint of the times by all believing people to ask, he says. Why aren't you asking? So we have the words and prophecies of this obscure person, Habakkuk. Not mentioned anywhere else in the scriptures. But his cry was righteous. And it was honest. It was honest. His cry was confident and faithful. But this cry should have been the people's prophecy, you see. The people's cry. He says, this should be your cry. As well, from every armchair, every dinner table, every barroom stool at the sports bar and the carpool and the soccer, the football sideline, the coffee pot or the water cooler at work. This should be your cry. Every sanctuary pew, it should be your cry. Everyone's question should be, how long Will this go on? It should be the people's complaint and lament showing grief, bewilderment, confusion. Where is the confidence of faith in the body of believers today? Where is the outcry for what is right the confident living of a faith in Jesus and his word that permeates through all our fears to speak out. We have a voice. Putting your purpose as a follower of Christ over your politics. Where is your spiritual confidence today? A man was preparing to fly to Detroit one morning. He checked the weather reports, which were ominous. He was nervous with the, the snow and the weather reports and the wind and the sub-freezing temperatures forecast when he was to land. He, he saw a Delta pilot approaching the gate where he was sitting. The man asked the pilot where he was going. 
Detroit, he told the man. Well, it turned out that he was the pilot for the man's flight. The man told him he was nervous because the weather, you know, in Detroit. Oh, we, we won't have any problems, the pilot told him. No problems. It may get a little bumpy here and there, but nothing, nothing too bad. The, the pilot told the man that the, the navigation equipment on the jet they will be traveling on is light years beyond anything he had as a Navy pilot. The pilot then turned to the man and he said, the only problem you'll likely to have is when you get to Detroit, driving in that weather can be dangerous. Be careful. Enjoy your flight. Well, the man boarded the jet, <clears throat> took a nap, read a newspaper, and proceeded to land softly into Detroit 20 minutes ahead of schedule. That man was me. Competence is an essential part of what we do. When you are good at what you do, you, you radiate confidence. When you are convinced, you're confident. And confidence is contagious. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Paul said to the Philippians. In Habakkuk's case, the voices of the people were not raised up. And when the people are silent on an issue, not confident, it then falls to individuals who are to speak up. Individuals who cannot abide by the constant hypocrisy they hear, the implicit answers from leaders, the out-and-out out lies, the dodging and juxtaposition on seemingly every aspect of our lives. Can't listen to it. The pack acknowledged what everyone should have acknowledged and said what everyone should have said. If he picked up a newspaper today or watched most cable news channels, he would no doubt have demanded from God, saying, explain, explain these cities, Lord. Explain these homeless people, Lord. Explain this crime, O oh God. He would have pleaded, saying, Lord, you created in your own image a people who send people to the moon, put, put vehicles on planets, build things that have to be seen to be believed, do and perform the most incredible things, medically transform people to health in mere hours sometimes with some people who can afford any military expenditure they desire. Yet, yet they allow their own sister and brother to go hungry. They allow babies to die. We would have pleaded saying, Lord, you created us in your image. Explain this to me, Father God. <coughs> Explain why this is happening. Explain to me, please, dear Lord, a budget that can apparently be balanced but a people who are willing to only do so on the broken dreams and lives of the most vulnerable and those hardworking middle class people. Explain that to me, oh God. And war, war. Habakkuk questions God asking why people are at war as they lower their standards claiming they are protecting higher standards. Explain that to me, oh God. If life's imbalances are observed, shouldn't they be corrected? Habakkuk asks, are you uninterested in justice, Lord, or just unable to do anything about it at all? If imbalances in the scales of justice should be observed, shouldn't they be corrected? Or is it that you are uninterested in justice, O oh God? We're just unable to do anything about it. But we ask, are the, are the cable news channels, the national news, and God all 
in the same conversation. Are they God? No. No. The violent crime, the war, having to defend a sovereign nation, and the out, outcry of, of this country simply trying to protect itself, the attack and the news in the middle. That is not God at work. That isn't God at work. And if God is not manipulating the, the circumstances of this world, not the great puppeteer in the sky pulling the strings, then why, why bother having God be in the conversation at all? You know, it's, it's a tricky business holding elected officials, national and international law, policies, treaties, holding these powerful people to godly expectations, isn't it? That's a tough job. And yet, and yet you think it's not that we have much have so much laudable expectations of our elected officials anymore because they are Christians, but because we are. It's because we are that we need to speak. I don't hold any of them up in high expectation. All the church and state conversations we have, it has for the most part been misunderstood, folks. The church has plenty to say to the state. Plenty. But we're silent. We need faith-inspired expectations of the state. All the many scenarios going on throughout the world this morning are not the scenarios of God. We act as though God really doesn't have much going on, do we? But we can't divide our faith, our affirmations, and our expectations from what we see on, in our day-to-day -day lives and our public life. We can't take Him out of that, ever. Imagine, imagine starting to separate our lives, our conversations from God. Okay, that situation can have God in it, this, this conversation, but this one can't. This, this one can't. We, we're not going to talk about God. We're not going to talk about matters of faith. What would then ask, one would then ask then, what conversations does God remain a part of? When do we include him and when do we exclude him? And what important conversations and discussions and actions is God eliminated from? How about we do this, folks? How about we invite God back into every conversation? Invite him back into every conversation. How about we invite him back into our homes we say to him, Lord, things are not good right now. They're not good. A lot of strife, oh God. A lot of friction, indecision, lies. Not your fault. Not your fault, we know. But we are now going to complain to you anyway. We are going to pray, Lord, in earnest. Maybe for the first time in our lives. We are going to pray and we are going to include you in our assessment of this world and what we see and what is going on. We are going to include you in how we live our lives. We're going to include you in how we share with you our hopes. And then, and then Lord, we are going to watch for your word, a word from you, holding our leaders to our, our best Christian standards as we will do in our lives and not vary from it. We are going to speak. Then the Lord answered me and he said, write a vision. A vision of a just and peaceful society. A world in which people take care of one another, O oh God. That vision, Lord, will include a world in whose vision we are created whose image we can live up to. Write it down. 
Write it down so we can compare it down the road with how things were and how things will become. We are going to pray and include you, Lord, in everything. Everything. We will, we will write it down so we don't forget that it will be the best vision we can have. Because, dear Lord, dear Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, because we are. We are your faithful, and we love you, and we love order, and we love justice. So help us, heal us, hear us pray. Amen.